Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about how we can find the domain of a function algebraically. There's something you need to know about all functions first. All polynomial functions have a domain of all real numbers, meaning lines, quadratics, cubics, and others will all always have a domain of all real numbers. So if you don't believe me, you can put an example into the calculator, uh, such as y equals 2x squared plus x minus 1. This here is a good example of a quadratic function. If you put that into the y equals, it's going to look something like this. I mean, my sketch could be very off, but it'll look something like that. And you see how these arrows are extending both directions, right and left? That means the domain is going to go on forever. The same thing will happen with lines, and the same things will happen with cubics. But sometimes, some of these functions will have restrictions. Well, when do we get the restrictions? We get them when we have a fraction, such as this one a square root function, such as this, and square roots in the denominator of fractions. So when you have these types of situations, your domain is not going to be all real numbers. So let's do a few examples and see how it works. So this first example here is an example of a fraction restriction. So you should know this, that uh, a fraction is undefined when zero is in the denominator. So what value here for x will make this whole bottom equal to 0? Now many of you can look at this right away and just say 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So if I were to plug in 2, 2 minus 2, that gives me 0. So I know that this fraction is undefined when x equals 2. So to be honest, that's all you need to do is figure out where it's undefined, and then you just state that the domain will be all real numbers except the value that makes it undefined. So the process, when it's not so easy to just see 2, is going to be to set the denominator, so we can say set bottom, equal to 0, and solve. Now again, this example is very simple, but you're going to have ones that are not as simple, so you want to make sure you understand the process. So set the denominator equal to 0, and solve. We add 2 on both sides, and we get x equals 2. So just like we said it was going to be, the domain will be all real numbers except for this value. So when writing it, we're going to write domain, and we're going to write all reals. This is the symbol for all real numbers. It's a little r with two lines instead. So all real numbers except when x equals 2. And that's enough. That is your answer and that is your domain. We will show you this graphically in class tomorrow, but algebraically this is how it's done. Okay, let's move on to the second example. So the second example is an example with a radical. Now, if we look at square root functions, what do we know we can't have? You should be saying we can't have negatives under the radical. We can have 0 and we can have positive numbers. Because what's the square root of positive 25? You should be telling me 5. What is the square root of 0? You should be telling me 0. And what's the square root of negative 4? You all should be saying 2i. Now, i's are something that's imaginary, something that doesn't exist. So radicals really can't have i's under them. I'm sorry, negatives under them. So what we want to do is we, to find the domain of any square root function, we can take the domain or find the domain by setting the expression under the radical greater than or equal to zero. So it has to be zero or higher. So for this example, we're going to set the inside greater than or equal to zero. So x minus 2 is the inside greater than or equal to zero. We solve nice and easy, and we get x is greater than or equal to 2. And to be honest, that's our domain. There's nothing more, nothing less. Our domain is going to be all x values that are greater than or equal to 2. So that's your answer for number 2, and this is your answer for number 1. Okay, example number 3 is on the next page, but before I do that, I want to talk about this situation here. What happens when I have a radical in the bottom of a fraction? Well, we know that radicals are greater than or equal to 0, but I'm in the bottom of a fraction, so I can't be equal to 0. So we simply just set the radical greater than 0. 
So let's do example number three. And here it is. So whenever we have a radical in the bottom of a fraction, we are going to set, so this first step is set denominator for the inside, really, the inside of the radical, greater than zero. Can't be equal to, so just greater than. So we say x minus two is greater than zero. Add two to both sides, and you get x is greater than two. Now we should probably write it properly, so let's write the domain is all x values that are greater than two. So this is your answer. Okay, I'd like you to try example number four and example number five on your own. Take a minute, pause the video, see if you can do them on your own, and then hit resume for a detailed explanation. Okay, example number four is all about a radical. So if you recall, when you have a radical, you're going to set the inside greater than or equal to zero. And we're simply going to solve for x. So we would subtract three on both sides. We get negative x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Divide by negative 1. But what you need to remember is that when you divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality sign. So the answer for the domain here is that your x values need to be less than or equal to 3. If you didn't flip the sign, that's where your mistake was. You probably got greater than or equal to 3. Okay, awesome, let's try number five now. So number five is an example of a fraction. So it can be everything but the values that make the bottom undefined. So we're gonna set the denominator equal to zero and solve. Now some of you might have forgotten, but you wanna take out a GCF of x and you'll be left with five x minus one, set it equal to zero. T chart, set each piece equal to zero and solve. Well, x equals zero is fine, and we can just leave that. Add one on both sides here, and we get five x equals one, divide by five, x equals one fifth. So what is the domain? The domain is all real numbers, so all reals, except when x is zero and x is one fifth. That would make these two values undefined, or would make the denominator undefined. So all real numbers except when x equals zero and when x equals one-fifth. Okay, number six, I saved the best for last, is probably one of the harder problems. You should first recognize that you have a fraction and that you have a radical in the bottom of a fraction. So what we would do is we would set the denominator inside the radical greater than zero. Again, can't be equal to zero, so greater than it. Now the problem is, is many of you are going to try to say, okay, well I have a quadratic and I can factor it. So if you factor this, you would get x minus 5 and x plus 4. The only problem is, is that this equation right here, it's not an equal sign, it's a greater than symbol. So that means we're going to have more than one possible value or more than two possible values. So what you want to do is you want to change it to an equal sign and treat it as if it were. So you would do your t-chart and you would set each piece equal to zero. So you get x equals five. And x equals negative four. So normally what we would do is we would say these would be the answers, but we can't just do that. So we actually have to do test points. So these two are your test points. You should have learned this in Algebra 2, but if not, here it is again. So what you're going to do is you're going to put negative 4 here, and you're going to put 5 here. Now the reason why I'm actually doing test points is because of this inequality and the square quadratic. So whenever you have a situation that looks like this and it's not equals to zero, you have to do test points. So what you would do, just to recap, is we would first set it equal to zero, so change the sign, set it equal to zero, solve like regular, and now we're going to put our test points on this number line here. So 
It's going to be an open circle because it's a greater than symbol and not greater than or equal to. So open here, open here. And we're going to test a value that's greater than 5. So we'll pick, I don't know, 6. We're going to pick a value between negative 4 and 5. My favorite in between negative and positive is always 0. And you want to pick a number that's less than negative 4. So negative 5. Okay, so let's try that. So negative 5. And what we're going to do is test these three values into this equation here and see which one works. So we're going to do each one nice and slow. So the first one we're going to check is this one right here, the negative 5. So again, we're putting it into this equation up here. So negative 5 squared minus negative 5 minus 20. And I want to see if it's actually less than, or sorry, greater than 0. So take a minute, put this into your calculator just the way you see it, and figure out what value you get. Okay, you should have gotten 10. So is 10 greater than 0? You should be saying yes. So that means this area works. So we're going to shade all the values that are less than negative 4. And now we're going to test when x is 0. So 0 squared minus 5, oops, sorry, 0 squared minus 0 minus 20. I want to see is that greater than 0. So trust me on the math, you should get negative 20. Is negative 20 greater than 0? Absolutely not. So that area doesn't work. So this area will not work. Now let's try 6. So 6 squared, 6 minus 20. Is that greater than 0? Well, again, trust me on the math here. You should have gotten 10 again. Is 10 greater than 0? The answer is yes. So we should shade this way. Now, this is an example of an or situation. I don't know if your teacher showed you this, but think of there as a little guy here in the middle, and these are the ors on the boat. So your domain is going to be, I'm going to put it down here just because I'm running out of room. Your domain is going to be either x is less than negative 4 or x is greater than 5. So again, x is your shaded values, so shaded values are less than negative 4, or the shaded values are greater than 5. So that is your answer for that last one. Now I know this stuff was a little confusing, so please make sure you have questions and ask in class tomorrow. Thank you.